Biobalance HealthCast episode 191, Myths of Testosterone Replacement for Women, part one. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today, what we're going to be looking at is the fact that uh, we're, we're going to be having a conversation about 10 myths about testosterone replacement. For women. And for, for, women. for women, absolutely. <laughs> uh, one of the myths that we combat regularly as we talk is the, the myth that testosterone treatments for women are illegal in the United States because they're not sanctioned specifically by the FDA. They're not illegal. They're I still not do illegal. them and I'm not we doing anything legal. Absolutely not. Illegal. Uh, it's off-label but it's not illegal. It's absolutely mm-hmm. legitimate. It's a thing that doctors do all the time for all kinds of things. But the reason I raise that point today is that we're going to be talking about information because we constantly do research to bring current trends and themes and, and news uh, to you. We obtained an article from a journal uh, that's published in uh, Australia, Asia, and Europe mm-hmm. called uh, Maturitis and Volume 74 of Maturitis of 2013 is an article by two well-respected doctors and researchers, Rebecca Glaser and Constantine Dimitrikakis. And they, they, I know Dimitrikakis has written a couple of books. I'm not we, sure about. We referenced, referenced in both of them book. in our book. Yeah, The Secret Female mm-hmm. Hormone. Uh, but they wrote an article called The Ten Myths About testosterone replacement in women Mm -hmm. in this journal. And they start out by saying testosterone replacement pellets, bioidentical pellets, have Mm -hmm. been legal and sanctioned for women in Europe since 1938. So they have over 60 years of research and and data accumulated about the effects of testosterone replacement Mm -hmm. in women that most people in America are not aware of, haven't absorbed yet. And so these myths that you hear in your practice Mm -hmm. or that other doctors are still disseminating uh, to women in their practices, Mm -hmm. we want to challenge. And so we're going to spend some time talking about each one of these myths. And and I'll just run through them uh, quickly so you can kind of get a sense of where we're going. Uh, This paper refutes 10 common myths and misconceptions and provides evidence to support what is physiologically plausible and scientifically evident. Testosterone is the most biologically active female hormone. Testosterone is primarily a female hormone. Right. Testosterone is essential for physical and mental health in women. Testosterone is not masculizing. Testosterone does not cause hoarseness in women. Testosterone does not increase scalp hair growth in women or Test- decrease health or, or decrease or no it does not decrease scalp scalp hair growth in in women. women testosterone is a cardiac protective parenteral testosterone does not adversely affect the liver or increase clotting factors and that means injected not oral or not oral like a pellet or or an mm-hmm. im injection testosterone is mood stabilizing and does not increase aggression testosterone is breast protective and the safety of therapy, uh, testosterone therapy in women, is under research and being established and has been for 60 years in Europe. So they so they're say, way ahead of us. Yes. <laughs> and they say that false conclusions repeated often enough, especially when supported with anecdotal observations, create myths that become widely accepted even in the absence of any biological or physiological rationale. You know, Brett, this may be our most important podcast. <laughs> It may be because it this may is be. this actually based on what they wrote. Right. Basically, that's how those are the same things we had in our book. Although we wrote our book and published it long before this article was out, but this is almost a synopsis of all the things that we had in our book. Well, it is because we've and, been concerned about each of those things, and and we've done individual podcasts over the last three years on many of them. Mm-hmm. But it is a, it's it's thematic and you hear it constantly from from doctors and patients oh that can't be so and it's, the, it's like everyone who's ever wanted to take over a country develops a lie <laughs> <laughs> that they just keep propagating and soon the lie becomes mm-hmm. truth and that's what it feels like to me here is that if they just say testosterone is bad for women enough and that women don't deserve or need or shouldn't have testosterone right. then they can then we can be controlled subjugated and after we're 40 right. we're done mm-hmm. so to me there's another you know there's another layer of method to the madness 
And I know that I'm kind of a conspiracy theorist. That's but what I've been I was just going to ask you. you think there's a conspiracy I've here? I've been dealing with this for so long. Event? It doesn't make sense that just randomly everyone would say in the U.S. that this is a terrible thing when the facts are that it's, it's a great thing for women and men to replace their testosterone. Well, we've been reading it, again, in the research that we do. Recently, there have been a whole spate of articles that... Uh, indicate there is an agenda to block or reduce the use of testosterone replacement as a hormone replacement in men and women. Mm -hmm. And in part because the pharmaceutical companies don't stand to make any money off of it because it's a bioidentical that mm -hmm. they can't license. And so you have all of these articles that, I mean, even on Facebook, I get Facebook postings now that Facebook has gone more commercial in its postings, mm -hmm. you know, from, from lawyers saying, uh, sign up for the testosterone lawsuit, you the know, get, get your name it. in the pile. Having said uh, this, I'm, I'm married to a lawyer, so I love lawyers, but lawyers will jump on any piece, uh, any tiny piece of data that they can jump onto, even if it's a terrible study, just so that they can cause people to sue someone big so that they can gain money. And that's part of their deal. And that's, I understand that. And, and that's one of the things that we have I, to deal with, but... They I think use it's part of how myths. the legal system works, but I think you, you want to continue to be careful about stereotyping a, I know. a group of people. That's true. I mean, but most of my friends are lawyers. Are. <laughs> I'm not, I shouldn't be saying this because most of my friends are lawyers, but there are there are certain kind there are certain types of lawyers, just like there's certain types of doctors. Absolutely. Who will uh, say, well. Let's just throw away the facts. We're just going to believe this one little there, thing. <laughs> there are qua there are quacks and misogynists who practice medicine. No, there are. You mean yeah? I'll, yeah. I can't speak to that because there are people listening to this that I know who are doctors too. Yeah, <laughs> Lots exactly. Of them. So I, the, the right. doctors in the new generation. I think we have a, we, we have a new start in Rachel, in my daughter's generation. I think that they're a, a different type of doctor. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I mean, I think that. There's, there's more hope for us to have a loving, caring, kind of compassionate physician in the next generation. But, but I could run on that, too. It, it's <laughs> arguable that part of the reason that women have not been at the center of medical research and received at least as much balanced uh, research and and development of treatment protocols as men mm -hmm. is because of a history of misogynism That's and male true. dominance. Uh, but that mm -hmm. is changing. There are more there are more women in medical school now than men. The number of doctors coming online that are female are much more. Changes in the law, changes in the research requirements that at least half of the, the research population have to be female now. Uh, yeah, all the, of that's moving in the right direction. The worm has turned. The worm, <laughs> the worm has so, turned. I thought it would take less time than this, but Having having seen my daughter yeah. gra uh, go through family practice residency, her life is so much different than mine was. It's awesome. The way she was I mean, treated, the and way the she was treated, and her education. And the BS she had to put up with. Right, right. Yeah. There was a, there's so much less of that, and so much less consternation about women. Oh, they're just it's all in their head. It's they don't do that. That's not acceptable anymore. It's acceptable only to find the reason why someone has the problems that they have. So today, we're going to get all of those myths that that were that were clouding your point of view so you about mean, testosterone so you don't say oh i can live with all of these terrible symptoms that i have because i'm afraid of aggression or losing my hair or my voice my changing, voice changing. Or, yeah so we're going to wipe those away today or i've had a couple of my patients who are your patients who've been worried that if they get testosterone replacement and get a sex drive that they'll become uh sexually aggressive animals and not be able to constrain <laughs> themselves and just be preoccupied. And it makes me laugh because it, that's not the way it works, but it's part of the myth that that's is out true. there. That's true. Men have 10 times as much testosterone as we do. If they are sexually <laughs> sexually um, obsessed, then there's a reason for that, and it's dose-dependent. We don't do that kind of thing with, with our patients. I, I literally had a female client of mine call me probably three weeks after you'd put testosterone pellets in her. And said, I'm having all these thoughts that I've never had. Am I going to jump the mailman? Is he going to be safe when he comes to the house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. You know, if you haven't had testosterone, that's that's one of the things. If you haven't had testosterone in years, and that's not even one of these myths, but right. if you haven't had testosterone for years, and then you get it, you have there's an adjustment period where your body's so hungry for it, it yeah. soaks it all up, and then your brain does get a short period of time with with that kind of thought, and then you know 
Then I felt bad for all the boys I dated when I was 18. I felt sorry for them because they all thought you, you they had all more felt sympathy like for that. what they went through. I felt bad for yeah. them because, you know, we didn't have that kind of level and they have that and that's all they could think about. And so you're dating them thinking, oh, this is just a date and their mind's in another place. So I kind of felt bad about that. I didn't really, I'm, I'm yeah. almost 60 years old and didn't understand it, yeah. you know, until, until I had to go through it in that very first month. But back to square one. Yeah. Well, it, it goes back to myths. I remember yeah. 40 years ago being told, and, and, I, and I now know there was no research to support it, but being told an adolescent male thinks about sex once every seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, how they came up with that, where they got that, I think they I made it I thought it was up. Kinsey. But I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it, but it's And not, if you're not old enough to know who Kins, the Kinsey report the research, was. yeah. <laughs> anyway. I don't think the research was really scientifically qualified. Uh, <laughs> no. But... That brings us to mm -hmm. the 10 myths okay. that were written about in, in this article and maturitis. Uh, the first myth that we want to talk about is the myth that testosterone is a male hormone. So Men what, have it, but it's not right. a male hormone. And male in, in, in the that, sense that women don't have it or shouldn't have it. Right. That's right. And only have it if they have a, an illness or something, which is wrong. Absolutely wrong. We have three times as much testosterone as estrogen, and that is documented in this article. We being females. We, women, being yeah. females, have three times as much testosterone as estrogen. Now, mm -hmm. men still have more testosterone than we do. I'm going over here. Men well, what the article still have more testosterone yeah, men, than we do. What, what but, the article says is that men have more circulating testosterone in their bloodstream than women do, but that testosterone is the most abundant and active uh, hormone in women for their entire lifespan. So how cool is that? Yeah. I mean, the, and they have sex steroid. Sex steroid. That's right. things from the ovary. So that that means the most abundant is testosterone, not progesterone. Like I was at a conference and someone came up to me and said progesterone's more more common, which is not true. Testosterone is then progesterone, then estrogen. So those are the levels. So at well, and the this one was a hormone physician's we've been conference. So a physician yeah, said a that. Yeah, a physician to you. said that to me. And the question so, then becomes where did you go to school because all the data is out there. Yeah, it is, but but it has been it has been skewed. Yes. And in a lot of our articles, I, I read and they go, "Oh, testosterone is just a minor hormone." They use that as an assumption. They don't have any reference for it. So mm -hmm. that it's another myth that they use in their articles, which makes other doctors go, "Oh yeah, okay." But in but truth, you, but you can this quote not, this article. It yeah. says testosterone is the most abundantly biologically active mm -hmm. sex steroid in women throughout their lives. Therefore, testosterone is not just a male hormone. Absolutely true, and that is what we find both in my clinical right. my clinical practice for the last twelve years, seeing people who have lost their testosterone and my replacing it. It is the most important. It has more symptoms with its deficiency than estrogen does. Estrogen has dry vagina and loss of hair in the front and hot flashes. That's it. Yeah. Well, and that's all we're trained as OBGYNs to replace. And that brings us to the second myth. The second myth is uh, discussed in the article. It's testosterone's only role in women is to impact sex drive and libido. So the only reason that you would have testosterone is if you didn't have a sex drive and needed or wanted right. to have one. Right. So that would be the only indication for a doctor we use. Like the reason we treat people are called indications. So the only indication to be treated with testosterone would be that you don't have a sex drive and you want one and you or you need one. Um, but it doesn't they don't say all the things on all those commercials about men and testosterone. Those are all the same things as our needs for testosterone without it we're we're fatigued we have no muscle mass we can't sleep our brain doesn't work we can't think our brain shrinks excuse me we have dry eyes we have dry skin our hair doesn't grow we feel without motivation depression and loss of libido which is what everybody considers part of it well i need you to give us some medical explanation okay. here because it, what the article says is the symptoms of androgen deficiency. That's testosterone deficiency in there. That's the same thing, mm -hmm. interchangeable mm -hmm. terms? For them it is. Okay. And so a deficiency in testosterone, the symptoms that present dysphoric mood, including anxiety, irritability, and depression, a lack of a sense of well-being, physical fatigue, bone loss, muscle mm -hmm. loss, changes in cognition or changes in your ability to think. Uh, memory loss, insomnia, hot flashes, rheumatoid arthritis complaints, uh, pain, 
general pain, mm -hmm. breast pain, urinary complaints, incontinence, mm -hmm. and sexual dysfunction. That's true. I had an incomplete list. Sorry. <laughs> well, but that's their point. But it's not all... just for sex drive and libido. No, it's for all of those things. And many of those things are consistent with what men get out of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And we, we need testosterone. I mean, if we're, we don't have testosterone, we're not... It's like not feeding us. Right. So, they're, so they're, we lose our testosterone and we're being starved by the protocols that are currently in the medical community in the U.S. So so in this article, what they do is they identify the myth. There are 10 of them. Then they give the science behind the research. Mm -hmm. And then they conclude that section with a statement of fact. Right. And this statement of fact is that testosterone is essential to the well-being of women physically and mentally, not just sexually. Absolutely. And that's absolutely true. And that's what I find in all my patients. Okay. So the next myth that they identify is the myth that testosterone or taking testosterone masculinizes women. And this, this is the first thing I hear when someone comes in as a new patient. Right. In about every other woman, they, they listen to I'm me, they go up. over their lab, they, they, you know, they go over everything, and then they say, okay, tell me I'm not going to start looking like a man. Right. And I'm thinking, but you know, some of that's the social media. Uh, the thing about anabolic steroids, you know, right. you, you read about different. football players or athletes uh, who take anabolic steroids and then they bulk up, they get heavy musculature mm -hmm. and firm jaw and and all these other things that we identify, and they're afraid if I take this hormone, mm -hmm. will I look like that? And well, be anabolic less steroids, not testosterone, no. and it's not given in the same amount or the same dose. Anabolic steroids are all the steroids like cortisol and all the uh, adrenal steroids, androstenedione dione and DHEA and all of the other dihydrotestosterone, all of those plus synthetic uh -huh. androgens that do that and make like female bodybuilders really look like not look like males in that they have no waistline because right. testosterone and all androgens give you a waistline, okay. believe it or not, as a female, not take it away. But they have much more muscle mass. But that's like the wrong, the wrong androgen <laughs> being given to the woman and too much being given to the woman. Well, they said so it's that's do not what we're dependent. doing. I mean, it's dose dependent. Right. We aren't doing that. And we actually, aren't making people look masculine at all. In fact, the best thing about testosterone is you can get your waistline back. And that's not masculine at all. I mean, testosterone sh shuts down the production of estrone, which is where our belly fat comes from. Right. So you can go back to having broad shoulders, a narrow waist, and hips, which is what a, a female body looks like. I don't know that I ever had that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you don't. Men are straighter. And yeah. that's the whole deal. We don't start looking like you guys. Right. We start looking like we used to. Well, and there is also confusion because in the media there are stories about transgender individuals. And yeah. they, they take heavy doses of drugs and medicines and often have surgery as a way to become what they biologically were not and Female, want to be. Females becoming males yes. as transgender. And that's, and that's an entirely different science. In fact... Right. I don't have the training to and, do and, that. And they refer to that as a suprapharmacological dose. But they say even with suprapharmacological doses in the article of testosterone, you still don't get that masculinization. Mm -mm. And, and actually, the, the reverse seems to be true. They say it's dose dependent, but they say it's been recognized in the research for over 65 years that testosterone effect is dose dependent and that in lower doses, it emphasizes feminine traits and aspects. Absolutely. Which goes to the previous myth that it's a female hormone. And it also stimulates, and one of the feminine things that they don't mention in this article is mm -hmm. pheromones. Okay, so mm -hmm. pheromones are those, the the uh, odors that women produce um, that attract men. And you don't make those without testosterone. Did you hear me? You don't make those, so that means you're not going to attract a man, no matter what you look like if you don't have pheromones. Well, testosterone makes pheromones possible. Without it, we don't have that femininity, that, that femininity to attract men. So, well, it works both ways. Men make pheromones, too. Yes, they do, and uh, they don't have it without testosterone either. Right. So it may, l testosterone replacement literally makes you more attractive, mm -hmm. which is, can't can't buy that, really. <laughs> 
So just becoming healthier and becoming your younger self gives you femininity and brings you back to being mm -hmm. who you were meant to be mm -hmm. when you were young. So they conclude that true masculinization by the replacement of testosterone is not possible. Right, true. And they also, in this segment, in the discussion, which is not one of the myths, but it's something that you've talked about before, and I want to bring this up, it says that uh, there is a fact uh, that there is no evidence, no evidence, that testosterone delivered by pellet implant will have an adverse effect on a fetus if a woman is pregnant. That's true. I read when I read that, we're just very careful in the US yes. to get not to give anyone who's mm -hmm. going to be pregnant testosterone. Mm -hmm. And even though I know that this research is out there, I'm still not going to give somebody testosterone. Well, at, you you say in the book and I yeah. hear you say to women all the time, if you're if you still have a uterus and you're still bleeding and you think you might ever want to get pregnant, don't start testosterone treatments. That's right. Or if you start them now, come off of them for before you try to get pregnant for at least a year. Mm -hmm. So you, that's your standard position about it. Right. But, but it, that's both it's got to be reassuring to know. It is reassuring that it doesn't. It doesn't there's no cause adverse, a problem no. for babies. But that doesn't. But please don't just take that at that value. Right. Please. Right. I am not suggesting that no. you go off your birth control. You still have the same position. I still right. have the same position. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be the cause. I mean, I delivered beautiful babies and amazing now adults for my whole life. I don't want to be the cause of a problem. I would never. And and I trust this, mm -hmm. but you just never know what could be, you know, somebody could have something wrong with their baby, have testosterone, link them together. There's not too much research on that because we don't have research on it causing well, and problems. And then they could just... 95 to 8 percent of your patient population, it's a non issue anyway. I know. Most people Because they're beyond the ages of fertility. But th when we read this, yeah, I read this, I went, the page. wait a like, minute. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. So, yeah. so they're saying they've looked at every bit of research they could get their hands on and they have no evidence of that. Right. Of, uh, of any kind of uh, adverse damage. So, we're going to continue this conversation in another podcast. Uh, we are obviously very passionate about all of these things, and especially the myths and the media misinterpretation, and even the medical misinterpretations. We've done a number of podcasts on the Women's Health Initiative and the, and the adverse impact on women's health that came out of that because of bad science and mm -hmm. bad headlines. So. Hopefully, we can make this both informative and interesting to you as a reflection of our passion and our research. But uh, so, so maybe you'll come back for our, our next podcast where rest we continue. The rest of the myths. you got to yeah. come back for the rest of the myths. All right. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.